exploring data. Uh, this is traditionally the first unit that most AP stat teachers start with. And it's kind of the foundation for moving forward in any statistical analysis that you're gonna do. Um, and there are three main topics when it comes to exploring data. The first one is different types of data. So as we collect information, we have to categorize it into different types of data. So it's important that we know the different types of data as well as how to analyze it when we recognize the different type. Two, how do we display it? So a lot of times we get all this information and we need to know what's the best way to display it so that we can analyze it effectively. And the third thing is how do we describe the distribution? I can almost guarantee you that there will be one free response question based off of 1.3 right there. I'm going to show you one now, but I can, again, I can guarantee you there's going to be like one or probably one question on 1.3. All right. And so that's how do we describe data when it's presented in a way that's, um, that allows us to break it down. All right, so let's dive into the different types of data. First, uh, we have categorical variables. So categorical variables are variables that you put into different categories, hence the name. Um, so for example, eye color, right? There's no numerical value for your eye color. It's just a category. So eye color, your blue, your red, your green, whatever. Uh, and then shirt size is another example. So you're small, medium, large. These aren't numbers that you assign. They're certain categories that you belong to. Uh, categorical variables can get kind of tricky, especially when it comes to zip code, right? Zip code is a number. However, it is a categorical data because it groups you into a certain area. Although those are numbers, those are categories that you're grouped into. So categorical variables usually don't take on numerical values. However, sometimes they do like, for example, zip code. And on the other side, we have what's called quantitative variables. So quantitative literally means like a number. So for example, your height, right? You, you could be 5'10", you could also be 5'10 and a half, or 5'10 and a quarter, right? So quantitative variables actually have a specific value, number associated with it. Your yearly income, so how much do you make a year? You could make 95,000, you could make 95,001, 95,002. So these are different quantitative variables. Also, time spent going to school, right? Time is a quantitative variable. How long does it take you to get somewhere? You can break it down lower and lower. There's no category to put you in, all right? So exploring data, we have the two types of data, categorical and quantitative. We have individual and we have variable and distributions. So an individual is just like one data point that, we're, that we captured. So an individual might be Brendan, your height, or um, Alex, your the time it takes you to get to school. It doesn't have to be categorical or uh, quantitative. It can be either one, but that's the individual. The variable is what we're measuring. So if I want to know someone's height, that would be the variable. Um, and then the individual would be your height or whoever I sample their height. And then the distribution is just how we display it. So we get all this data. How do we display it in a way that's effective? So how do we display this data? It's great that we have all these different types of data, but if we don't display it in a way that's effective for us, it's useless to us. So first for categorical data, we have bar graphs and pie, pie graphs. Those are the two big ones in AP stat. However, you really won't see a categorical data question on the AP exam. So I can't tell you the last time I saw a bar graph or a pie graph as a free response question on the AP exam. The AP test, tends to focus over here on the quantitative side. And to be honest, it's just because you can do more with quantitative variables. Uh, categorical variables kind of limit your ability to analyze. Quantitative, you have a lot more things to break down. First, let's go over the two most popular ones, which would be the dot plot and the histogram. So over here, you're gonna see a histogram. Now there's important key features for a histogram. One on the left-hand side, you're always gonna see frequency. So that's how many, right? How many people did we get into? And then on the bottom, we have the bins. So we call these bins left and right. On the AP exam, you probably won't have to create a histogram unless you're using your calculator. So very rarely will they have you create it using uh, pen and paper. A lot of times they'll just ask you to do it on your calculator and then analyze it on the, on the test. 
but it's important that you pick your bins wisely. So right now this bin is about every five. If we did every 30, we really wouldn't see a lot. So your bin width is gonna be really important when you're creating these histograms. You want it so that you can kind of see how the data is spread out. Now we're gonna get into like, what do you mean by spread, Mr. Durkin? We're gonna to get to that in a little bit. Dot plots. So down here you put the number. So in this case, we're doing weight. And then every time you get a similar point, you just kind of stack it up. So you can see the two data displays are very similar, but there are some advantages and disadvantages to each display. Next, we have the stem and leaf plot. So the stem and leaf plot is a popular one. However, you won't want to use stem and leaf plots for really big data sets. So anything more than like 30 or 40 data sets, you wouldn't want to use the stem and leaf because it's going to take you forever to make. So instead, you'd want to use probably a histogram where you can break it down a little bit easier. So the stem is going to be the number that categorizes the leaves. So for example, this data point right here is 23. And then it goes 26. And then 20. And then 22. So the stem tells you the first number and then the leaf tells you the last number. If you have a three digit number like 123, the stem would be the double digit and the leaf would be the single digit. All right, over here is probably the one you may be least familiar with and that's called a cumulative frequency graph. So with cumulative frequency graph, it tells you the cumulative, so cumulative means everything added up, frequency of something happening. So here we have duration of minutes, and then we always have our cumulative frequency on the left. So the left is always gonna be the same, just like a histogram always has frequency on the left. But this tells you the percentage. So let's pretend this is uh, someone running, running a mile. So this would be that 20% of the people ran a two minute mile. And then over here, as we get to three, this would mean 40% of the people ran a three minute mile or less. So we're taking this 20% over here and including it in this part of the graph. So if we wanted to figure out what percentage of the data, and this has been an AP question before, what percentage of the students or what percentage of the group ran between a two and three minute mile, you would subtract this frequency from this frequency. So about 20% of the people would be running a two to three minute mile. And of course, you're always going to end up at 100% because that's 100% of the data. All right. And the last one is number five, a box plot. And so I thought the best way to show you a box plot was through an actual AP problem. Um, so here we have an AP problem that I did with my class one of the first weeks of school. Um, and I like it because it kind of shows you what a box plot is, as well as shows you what am I going to, what am I supposed to do with actual uh, data displays on the AP exam. So we have two large corporations, A and B, and they hire many new college graduates as accountants at entry-level positions. In 2009, the starting salary for an entry-level accountant was about 36,000 a year at both corporations. Five years later, they measured how much they were earning. So here is data from five years after they started here. And you can see we got our box plots. Now, box blocks break down the data into 25%. So each little section, like this one right here, this one right here, this one right here, and this one right here, represents 25% of the data. Now, that can get difficult at times because students often like to say there's more data here than there is here. And that's not true. What it means is this part is more spread out. So it just breaks down 25% of the data. For example, here we have 60 employees, right? So 25% of 60 is gonna be 15. So 15% 15 of the employees in Corporation A have between 38 and maybe $47,000 a year after five years. So again, I really wanna stress that this breaks down 25% of the data. 
And this middle bar right here represents your median. So that's if I took all the numbers, put them in order from least to greatest, that would be the middle number. This first box right here represents quartile one. So if you think of a quarter, a quarter is 25 cents. This right here is 25%, the 25% mark of the data. Over here, 75% of the data. And these two, we call outliers. So the first topic we went over was all about the different types of data. Then we went into how to display data. And now we're gonna get into, okay, now that we have the data displayed, how do we analyze it? 